Biographics and Tom McCracken are the biomedical illustrators of the team. They have expertise in the artistic rendering of realistic looking pictures. His role, while being similar to mine in terms of being an, edu an anatomical educator, is unique in that he has the illustration background and the, the artist's eye, shall we say, that he could look at an image and say, you know, it needs a little something, it needs this, it needs that. Normal, as you know, the uh, left ventricle is about three times uh, as thick as the uh, right ventricle. When we incorporate his suggestions, often I realize that the image looks better, but I would never have been able to describe what to do, how to improve it. So he's had a very unique perspective in this project. Behind the scenes, in getting these rendered images on the screen, is lots and lots of complex and detailed mathematical algorithms. And Rick is the master of the algorithm. Rick Miranda is a mathematician, and he specializes in topographical mathematics, which is the surface of structures, you know, defining a mathematical. In this triangulation, for instance, where, where there's holes or where a surface changes radically. For Dave Alciator is a professor in the mechanical engineering department and his particular specialty before he came on to our project was robotics. Well, My background is robotics, artificial intelligence and computer simulation where instead of simulating components of anatomy I'm simulating mechanical components but the process is almost identical so it was a very natural meshing there. Hopefully it won't be difficult for the computer. Why don't you uh, go up five sections in the okay. stick. Towards the head or towards Let's the Let's go towards the feet. The first step involved after we receive these pictures and a given region of the body or a given specimen might have anywhere from five to seven hundred slices for that particular region. We outline all of the structures at a particular level of the body that we're interested in making a part of our final image on the computer. So you can see the uh, longitudinal muscle here is fairly delineated. When you get in here, if you follow the same level of thickness that was on the other side of the right. esophagus, you can make a very accurate uh, tracing. Really what the contour tracer is doing when, when he or she is sitting here working on a project is uh, translating uh, real human anatomy as you see it on the screen uh, to a series of, of points that describe the surface of a particular structure like like uh, the lung or, or the heart. Let's uh, go to level 722. I think we've got a okay. problem there. There you go. Okay, see um, see the white contour there? That should be connected up with the... Uh, to there. Right. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. Try trying. Once we have these shapes called contours, which define the outsides of all the different structures, the next step is to generate a surface that connects all of these shapes. That process is called triangulation. The reason for calling it that is that when you link these stacks together, you draw lines between the individual contours, and it's sort of like, like lacing these together, and what's left behind the lines are little triangles. If you want to take that object and spin it around and look at it from other directions, each time you make a spin, the computer has to redraw everything. And so if you have too many triangles for the computer to draw quickly, you lose some interactive capability. So we want to uh, use fewer triangles without degrading the image at all. Again, we want to decrease the amount of data here. We want to get rid of some of these triangles, get rid of some of these points. And we developed algorithms that are called decimation algorithms. They decimate or throw away unnecessary points and triangles. And by getting rid of those and replacing them with larger ones, the image won't change at all. Visually, it doesn't look any different. To the naked eye. To the naked eye, exactly. If you can extract the essence of your image in a small amount of data, this is going to be a big win for the, the downstream applications. Once this triangulation is done, then you can grow, shade it, surface it, and make it look like a real solid object. Then we take photographs of parts of the organs, say the lungs, living tissue, uh, and we take these photographs and we do what's called texture mapping. We take this particular tissue that's uh, very similar to the tissue of, in fact it's the exact tissue, and we wrap it around each structure so that it looks like a living structure.
order to see the medication go through properly, we're going to have to make the sides a little more transparent. Mm -hmm. I'd say, well, let's take a look from uh, from underneath. We might consider a different color to indicate the medication. All right. IEI's role in developing post-marketing applications is to take these images and actually put them into different specified programs, actually think about different concepts, different ideas, put them down on paper, and then start doing the creative aspect of it, taking these images and, and putting them into different interfaces and different types of scenarios. And with the PMS color, we're all set to go. We're in charge of quality control, data management, and also coordinating the data for the different marketing applications. And of course, uh, one of the key uh, team members, Glaxo Welcome Incorporated, uh, the company that challenged us uh, in the beginning. Uh, conditions, I mean, that, those are being completed right now. We are genuinely interested in medical education, and we're genuinely interested in how that can apply to the most elementary level, all the way up to the most scientific level, which would be our research that brings the drugs to the medical community. We have the team. We can do it now. Uh, we can put the human body, we can take an actual human body, put it into the computer in 3D. We can go into print, CD-ROM, CDI, laptop, videotape, virtual reality, any technology platform. We now have a three-dimensional human body which we can use uh, to communicate this extremely complex information. Virtual anatomy is unique in itself because we're talking about images that have been sliced from an actual human body so that you know that they're accurate and precise. They can be doused out to all these different types of platforms such as the Macintosh and, and the PC platforms. This stuff is very unique, it's very realistic, and you're able to select different aspects of it and see the anatomy as it really is and not a cartoon version. We could make them look like cadavers, but the goal in every depiction that you generally see of anatomy in any textbook is that they're drawn to look like they come from a living individual. And so we decided that that should be our goal too, particularly since this would provide an important adjunct to cadaver use. When you dissect a cadaver, there's no denying that it does not look like a living individual. And so the image that you get here is accurate in terms of where things are. It's not so accurate in terms of what it looks like in life. Now, and once you dissect a cadaver, it's not useful anymore. You, uh, you can't dissect a cadaver twice. But a, a virtual cadaver, a virtual uh, anatomy information can be used over and over again by many different people, of course, as many times as you care to turn the computer on. <laughs> <laughs>